At Trimble, we define the construction project as the construction continuum. And within this continuum, what we set up or we mapped out is the different phases of the process or the construction project. And we've developed technology that fits, specifically software, that fits in the different areas or the different sections of this construction continuum. I want to spend a few moments talking about the execute construction phase, particularly about the process of data capture. Now there's all kinds of data capturing tools available out there. Um, we have our traditional you know, RTK base and rover, you've got your total stations, you've, uh, you're hearing a lot about the UAVs and drones being used to check for project monitoring and, um, and other you know, inspection and surveying and all kinds of uses. Um, but I think we miss out on a couple things. One is the scanner. Scanners are used as well. Sometimes people choose to drone over the scanner or over some of these other more traditional methods. And that's kind of where I want to start the topic or the discussion here and have a discussion about when to use a drone versus other technologies and expose you to some new technology or some existing technologies that we overlook really. Um, so the case of the drones, it's a great tool, don't get me wrong, and I'm not here to knock it. I think it has its use, but use when appropriately. There's certain areas where it can't be used. There's a lot of requirements and challenges that come with this. So what I really want to focus on here in the next few moments is mapping with the machine. And what I think we overlook in the, the discussion that I want to have here is that most people when they think of machine guidance or they think of automatic machine control, whatever you want to call it, is it's used for pushing dirt. Um, it's used for you know paving or you know there's a lot of different uses for it but everybody's thinking about laying the material down or moving the material out on the site but what we fail I think to forget or fail to remember and, and we forget is that um, it's it's a survey device it can be used for collection whether you've put it on a dozer whether you put it on a compactor whether you put it on a grader or even an excavator it is RTK it's the same accuracy that you're gonna get from your basin rover um, it's the same accuracy if you're using a, you know, a, a robotic total station, you know, for laying down gravel, and um, you know, using UTS or lasers versus the uh, the GPS. Okay, so you're still going to be able to get this information. Now the key here is how do you get that data? Well, we have a product called VisionLink, and VisionLink allows us to take the map data from the machine, bring it up into a portal where we can do daily, hourly, weekly productivity um, uh, capture of, of information and data. So as it's mapping, it's pushing the data up to a cloud. So if things are configured right with the right connectivity, you're able to bring that data up uh, into VisionLink. And within VisionLink, we can have a dashboard where we can look at the volumes that we collected yesterday, today, based on certain filters. And we can even look at this data out in the field. So if you wanna look at a cut fill map in near real time, you could use the mobile access uh, on your phone, tap into your Vision Link site, and you're able to you know, look at your project. I wanna take it a step further here in my pre uh, presentation here this morning and talk about the machine data overlay capability. And what this is is the ability to capture or bring that data directly into Business Center from the machine. So the example here I'm gonna show, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna look at my project and I have a project here and I have a, a, a basin. All right now this is part of a much larger site so within Business Center where we've got this big project here. Now if I look over at um, uh, Vision Link, this is the, what you see in Vision Link, this is the entire project um, and what I'm looking at here is where I'm talking about looking at my cut fill. So I got red is where I got a cut, blue is where I got a fill, and green is where I'm on, I'm on grade. Now, if I come down here into where my pond is, you can see that you know we've been collecting data using our dozer um, and our compactor to uh, get this information. Now, this is within Vision Link, and I can see what my status is of how much more I have to go and uh, how much more work I have to do. There's a lot of other metrics that I can get to, but again, focusing on the business center side, I want to uh, I want to be able to bring that data in here and actually manipulate it and verify it with my project. So. What I've done here with my project is I've got my pond built and I've basically created my job site and my designs and my work order. So you can see that I've got it out on my SCS 900 as well as my GCS 900 and I'm using it to you know grade the site. That's all well and good. Well, in the GCS, if I come into the menus here, 
you'll see that I can come down and I can set up certain mapping recording options and settings. So if I go into here, there's a couple of different ways or a bunch of different ways that I can do this. So if I look at the blade tip mapping, I can kind of set it to how I want to map, whether I'm driving forward, whether automatics are on, whether autos are on and I'm moving forward, always being mapped, uh, or just driving forward. So there's different settings I can put here. I can configure certain centers uh, or uh, sensors on the machine as well. Okay, but once I get that data, it stores it, it collects it, it's being mapped, and I can bring that data back into Business Center. So how I do that is I go into my machine data tab, and on my machine data tab, I connect to that same VisionLink project, and I create a machine data overlay. By doing this, I'm not exporting out of VisionLink. I'm actually tapping into this machine. So I'm tapping into the device that's out there surveying. And in this case, it could be surveying right now as we speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to give an overlay name. and I'm going to call it uh, Basin um, Overlay. And the type that I want, you see there's different types I can pull in. I can pull in different sources of data. I'm going to grab the elevation data. Now, I'm also going to filter this to an area where I only want what's around my pond. Otherwise, I'm going to get the entire site, which may not be bad, but right now I'm just concentrating on this pond. Now, I can also come down to my machines. There's filters. I can choose what machine is mapping and which machine I want to pull the data from. In this case, I want to pull it from both my dozer and my compactor. Um, I can set the date range so I can see, okay, I want to see what they did this week. I want to see what they did last week. Well, I want to go look at the project extents in this case. And then I can also set the elevation type. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick last. I want the last elevation that was collected by that equipment. I'm going to click create. And what it's going to do is it's going to create an overlay. Now, once it creates that overlay, I can do all kinds of different things with it. So if we take a look here, here's the overlay. Um, and it's just really, uh, showing me the data that's been collected within that area. Now what I need to do or what I, my next step is to come in here and create the surface. So from there I'm able to create the basin surface. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it uh, basin overlay surface. And we'll click create. Now what this does is it basically is going to generate a point cloud. So when I go back over to here it's actually you can see all the points that it imported it's creating a scan um, essentially inside a business center so now when I come over here you'll see that I've got the scans that I can use and if I zoom in you can see all the points that have been collected and it's created a surface so now I have a surface of my um, overlay I have a surface of my design um, now you'll see there are some anomalies now again because I have a point approximately every foot um, I want to clean this up and make it a little bit more user friendly so I'm just going to kind of ignore the overlay surface even though it's here and I'm going to come in and I'm going to create let's go ahead and turn off the basin surface for a second I'll leave that on um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over to my point clouds now so now that I have a point cloud I can use the point cloud functionality within Business Center where I can use this scan to CAD and what I'm able to do here is grab that point cloud region, sample a point every five feet. This is still going to give me more data than I would if I was out there manually out there topoing it. And I'm going to go ahead and put these points on a scan point layer. When I click apply, um, now again, I can do this, the same feature I'm showing you here, I can use with my total, uh, my SX10 scanner, I can use with a, a LiDAR point cloud scanner, or I'm sorry, from a, a drone. Um, so if I got that point cloud in a business center, these steps are all the same that I would use um, with, uh, or you know, use with that data, those sources. So now that I have those points, what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn off the scan uh, and the overlay, and I'm going to create a surface. Let's call it uh, basin as built or in progress. And what I'm able to do here, spell it right, is let's we'll go ahead and call it a work in progress. And let's make it orange. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick all the points on that layer. And we'll click OK. So now I have a surface 
that has been used from those points. So it's a little bit less um, data than what was used from the point cloud, but the reason I did this is now I can come in here and get rid of some of these anomalies. So I can just go ahead and grab that point, simply delete it because I think it's a bad point. Um, come over here and do the same thing. I can take get rid of that point there, get rid of uh, this one here, and basically now I have my surface. Maybe I come over here. Again, remember this is a work in progress. There's probably some anomalies that got picked up from that data, but by going from the machine data to these CAD points it makes it a whole lot easier for me to manipulate and clean up my site. Okay. So now that I have that, I have my surfaces. I can use my earthwork reports. Um, I can go ahead and uh, you know create a, uh, a stockpile depression report, a surface to surface report. And, you know, check all my volumes. I can simply use my surface slicer to come in here and slice across my site. And if I look at my surface, get rid of the overlay surface and just use my basin versus my as built in progress, I can see where I'm at out on site really pretty quickly. Right? So I can see that maybe I got some bad shots here. And by doing this, I can go out and send my guy out there and say, hey, go out and look in this area here, maybe topo it, you know, shoot me some pictures. Let's make sure that our site is good to go. But what I just showed you was there was no effort in having to go out and fly the site, process the drone data, um, go out there and really collect anything. I just brought this directly from the machine. So that's the benefit and the power um, of using the machine uh, and the resources because the machines are there. So if you think about just using it for machine guidance, use it for mapping as well. Turn on the mapping. You're going to be able to capture that data. The worst case, you may not need it or may not have to use it, but at least you, you know that you can use that. So you're going to be able to do more, more work with, um, with the same technology that you currently own. Now I can take this surface and I can, you know, uh, in Vision Link, it's actually showing me the progress, but um, I, this is a service in Business Center. I can do more with it. So if you want to know more about this machine data overlay and this entire workflow process, contact us, contact your local SciTech dealer. We're more than happy to take a deeper dive, but I just want to spend a few moments and quickly show you uh, this technology that I think gets overlooked um, that you know is right there. And you actually, if you're using machine guidance and you're using Trimble, uh, you know, GCS or even Earthworks, you're able to tie into VisionLink, tie into your machine through Business Center and, uh, and get this type of, uh, these types of results. So again, hope this was helpful. Contact us with any questions. We'll be more than happy to uh, come in and discuss it greater, in, in greater detail.